Meena here, extending a warm welcome to my channel, Grow Joyfully. In a two-part series, I intend to explain what lactobacillus serum is, how to prepare it at home and how to use it effectively for our plants. The lab serum is prepared in two steps. In this first video, I introduce what lab is and explain the process followed for step one. Let me first present some concerns that we have as uh, farmers or gardeners. Many a time we use compost and uh, we may have a doubt, is the compost 100% done? What happens if it is immature? That means it's not fully done. Immature compost contains substance which can be damaging to the plants, including acids and pathogens. Also, immature compost will continue to decay in your soil or the potting mix. And this is a process that will use up nitrogen and oxygen and they will not be available for plants. It could generate heat which is harmful to the roots of the plants. The second concern, if I provide rich organic uh, nutrition to the plants in the soil, are they absorbed by the plants directly? The answer is no. We require beneficial bacteria and fungi to perform the role of a cook. They need to convert the nutrition that we provide in the soil or the potting mix into a form that is absorbed by the roots of the plants. The next concern is, is the potting mix or the soil well ventilated? The potting mix must not be too compacted. Aerobic bacteria requires air. Roots also require air. While we definitely want beneficial bacteria and fungi to thrive in the potting mix or the soil, we would like to reduce or minimize the population of harmful fungi and bacteria. When we sow the seeds, we definitely look forward to a high percentage of uh, success. And as germination happens, the saplings grow, we do look forward to growing plants which are highly uh, resistant to pest attacks that's having a high degree of immunity and also we look forward to plants which grow very well and giving us a very good yield. Is there a product that will address all these concerns and we also look forward to making this product ourselves at home at a very low cost and that's what I'm going to talk about in this video culturing lab. Lab refers to lactobacillus or lactic acid producing bacteria. They comprise a set of more than 40 species. They are beneficial bacteria which uh, are used as starter culture to perform fermentation. So they are highly useful in the production of a wide variety of food uh, which calls for fermentation like wine, yogurt or curds, pickle, beer, kimchi, kefir and other fermented foods. They are present in a wide variety of environments. They are present in soil, in plants, in the bodies of animals and humans too. Lab plays a very beneficial role in enriching the soil or the potting mix. So I am going to talk about the process to culture lab at home and explain how to use it in horticulture. Lab facilitates increase in soil ventilation. They arrest the growth of harmful bacteria in the soil or the potting mix. They also make the nutrients readily available to the plants. They act as excellent compost accelerator. There are also many other uses. I'll talk about them later. The recipe for culturing lab at home calls for two key ingredients, rice washed water and raw milk. Optionally, you require molasses or jaggery. In case you want to make in uh, large quantity, and uh, store it for longer duration at room temperature. We may use any store bought rice. I am using organic rice here. One part of rice take two parts of dechlorinated water. Add the water to the rice and uh, mix it very well. In India we are used to doing this with our hands. You will find the water turning cloudy or milky. You may use lukewarm water. You may also soak the rice in water for 15 minutes. 
before we separate the water. Now we will transfer this rice washed water to a glass or a plastic container that's clean and it has been uh, sterilized. Here we ensure that we fill it only up to two thirds of the volume that is leaving one third of the space empty. We may use your hands as I am doing here or you may use a sieve in order to transfer the water to the container. Please ensure that you choose a container which has a wide mouth. Cover the mouth of the jar with breathable cloth like muslin or paper and uh, secure it with rubber band or ties in order to keep out the pests. We need to store this jar or container at room temperature away from direct sunlight. Be careful not to shake or move the jar when it ferments. We need to leave it like this for 3 to 5 days. Let us understand the reasoning behind uh, the step 1 process. First we require a source of carbohydrates in order to attract bacteria including lab from the surrounding air. Rice is easily available in most areas and hence we use rice wash water. You may substitute rice with another carbohydrate source if you don't have rice in your area. Uh, you need to ensure that uh, you use complex carbohydrates like wheat, barley, quinoa etc. as a base to make your carbohydrate wash. Please avoid simple carbohydrates like sugar, honey, syrup, molasses etc. While rice wash water is a good source of uh, carbohydrates, it's a nutrient poor medium for lactic acid bacteria. This ensures that only the stronger bacteria are collected. Of course, along with lab, other bacteria from the air are also getting attracted now. The duration for step 1 depends upon the ambient temperature. In tropical countries like in India, it takes about 3 to 5 days, uh, 3 days in uh, summer and 5 days in winter. If you live in very cold climatic regions, step 1 may take even 2 weeks. Microbes are more active and the step 1 gets over fast in warm temperature scenarios. We are preparing lab at home, not in uh, controlled conditions as in a laboratory. Now we know that the du duration for step 1 varies. How do we know that step 1 is completed? It is very easy. You need to look for two signals. You may open the container and check every day. The first signal is one of a smell. The contents will start smelling slightly sour. No foul smell, no rancid smell. If you get foul smell or if you see a black colony formation on the top surface, you may have to discard the contents and start again. The second signal is also very easy to observe. You will see three distinct layers. The top layer consists of floating carbohydrates left over from fermentation. It may look like a matty layer with some semi-solids. The bottom layer usually consists of some debris, starch, byproduct of fermentation. It is a middle layer that we are interested in. This is the liquid which contains both lactic acid and other bacteria. I suggest using a container which is made up of clear material like plastic or glass so that you can see the layers getting formed. Here I am showing a glass container where you can see the three layers distinctly. The top layer is a semi-solid matty layer. You can easily scoop it out with your hands or with a spoon. You can see the bottom layer also having some debris which we are not interested in. What is of interest to us is the central portion, the liquid, which contains lactobacillus bacteria as well as other bacteria. The clear liquid in the middle is what is called as uh, fermented rice wash water. This has many types of bacteria including lactobacilli. We need to isolate lactobacilli and let it grow vigorously by giving some good feed. This is what we will be doing in step 2. Let me address some queries with respect to ingredients and process. You may use uh, any type of uh, uncooked rice. Just ensure that uh, you get a good cloudy water when you wash the rice. For milk, we prefer unpasteurized milk. 
but in india we get pasteurized milk so we use it uh, chemical free milk powder also can be used and there is really no need to boil the milk soaking in lukewarm water is optional and you may choose a container which is made of clear material like plastic or uh, glass so that you can observe the progress in step 1 and we suggest using water free of uh, chlorine to wash the rice because chlorine will kill the bacteria if uh, you get only chlorinated water you can dechlorinate it by simply exposing the water to air for about uh, 24 hours and let the chlorine evaporate in the next video i will explain the second step in the making of lab serum i'll also explain how to use it in gardening and other contexts thank you for watching my video have a great day